Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is the Fadil again with a video and this time the video is all about market failure. A topic which is very nearest and dearest to me. The reason is that because this topic is from economics 2281. Okay. Uh, not because it's from economics. The reason is that because it's something which is very practical. Every topic of economics is very practical. But remember one thing, the topics which are very easy to relate these topics are very easy to explain and these topics are very interesting for the students so if you haven't subscribed do subscribe to the channel share this video with those who are doing all of this economics so let's start with the video market failure what does it mean by market failure remember one thing that market fails to allocate what does it mean the market fails to allocate right quantity of resources right quantity of resources to right place okay to right place let's suppose if i talk about resources i already told you this thing that we have four resources which is factors of production which is land labor capital and enterprise labor capital and the last one is enterprise okay remember this thing so if we have four factors of production so we need to spend those factors of production very carefully because we know this thing very well that resources are limited but wants are unlimited so in order to satisfy the maximum wants we need to allocate these resources in the best possible manner. So if you're not able to allocate right quantity of resources to right place, let's suppose if uh, you have the demand of 100 laptops, okay, so customers are asking for 100 laptops from you and you're only, uh, and you're, you have produced 200 laptops with yourself. Okay, you have stocked these laptops, these laptops are in your, are in your warehouse. So what happened? You have produced 100 additional, 100 extra laptops, which was not required. Maybe you would have uh, used this labor rather than making it laptops. You would have used this labor to make something else, which was in demand, which was uh, required by the people. So we need to just think about that. So there are some important concepts which are there, which is private cost. Okay. The first concept which comes in our mind is private cost. What is private cost? Private cost means the cost born by the individual the cost born by the individual okay what does it mean it it means that what is the cost which is born by the individual what is the cost which is paid by the individual example buying a car buying a car in five lakh dollars okay again i know that the car is very cheap at in us but i'm using five five lakh dollars the reason is that because five lakh dollars it looks some stylish because we are doing in uh, the goal of this economics is it good, looks good over oh, yeah. here. So we have bought a car in five lakh. So I have paid five lakh dollars to a shopkeeper, to a showroom person, the one who was selling this. So this is a private cost to me because this was a cost to me. And again, if I paid a cost, so this is a private cost for me. So let's suppose if I give you another example, buying a laptop. Okay. Buying a laptop in dollar twenty thousand because laptops are maybe cheaper at in us so i bought a laptop twenty thousand so if someone asked me that what is your private cost so my private cost is twenty thousand dollars now in contrast in comparison there is something else which is termed as private benefit what is that private benefit means the benefit received the benefit which is received by me by the individual okay by me means that by the individual the benefit received by the individual Okay, so this is something very important by the individual. If I give you an example of that, maybe after buying the laptop and I'm just using laptop and I'm making these videos, which I'm making over here, making laptop videos. So these are the benefits I'm receiving after buying the laptop. Okay, making YouTube videos, maybe this is one of the benefits. And maybe there are a lot of benefits of using laptops, but again, it all depends how you are just using that laptop. So private cost is there in front of you, private benefit is there. The problem is that every person who is buying in the market is considering only private cost. Okay, considering only private cost and private benefit. Private cost and private benefit. So this is one of the problem in our market. Let's suppose if I bought a new car. So what I'm, I'm doing, I'm just using that car in my vicinity, I'm using that car in my surroundings and I'm receiving the benefit from that car. So I'm, I have paid for the car, which is the private cost. 
I am receiving the benefit of the comfort and the convenience to comm commute anywhere. That is the private benefit I have received. Okay. So these two things go side by side. So we are clear about this thing over here that the private cost and the private benefits are being considered by the individuals. Okay. And where the problem lies? The problem lies is that there is something which is called as external benefit and external cost. External cost and external benefit. So we need to just write it down. External cost and external benefit. So this external cost means the cost borne by the third party. The cost borne by third party. Borne by third party. Okay. Third party means the one who is not involved in the transaction. Maybe uh, I have bought a car. Okay. So I have bought a car. So if I buy a car, maybe the uh, the noise pollution of the car is hurting you in a negative manner. Okay, one thing. Second thing, the air pollution because of the car. So maybe the life expectancy of people, people might not be able to achieve a certain age due to this. So this is a harmful effect on someone who was not involved in the transaction, someone who was not involved in my decision. But again, there was a negative cost to that person. Maybe I'm driving my car and I'm just uh, putting my hand on the horn and I'm just pressing it so loud so that the persons who are uh, there in the hospitals, they are being disturbed in this scenario. So it is a negative cost for the third person who is not involved in this scenario. Okay. External benefit, the benefit received by third party. I'll give you the example of that. The benefit received by third party. Okay, what is the benefit of this? The benefit of uh, the, the example of this, the example will be that the benefit received, maybe if I give an example of this, that <clears throat> education. Everyone acquires education around us. And if that person, he or she is acquiring education around us. So because of that person acquiring education, our society is getting the benefit, but our society is not paying for this. How our society is getting benefit? Because those persons, those, pe those people who are getting education, they are just having good discussions. Okay. They are just having good discussions in their surroundings and they are just, they are just disseminating the knowledge, the information they have with themselves. So when they are disseminating the information, so again, what they are doing, they are going, doing a benefit to those people who are not involved in the transaction, who are not the decision makers. For the education, the person is paying for themselves. They are receiving the education, but when they are involved in some decisions, some discussions with some people, so they are receiving the other people are receiving external benefit. So this is something called as external benefit. Whenever we are making any decision, whenever we are making any decision, whenever we are making any decision, making any decision, we do. We do not consider external cost or external benefit. External cost and external benefit. So again, I have just explained it till here. So we'll continue with this video in the next class where I'll be explaining the social cost, the social benefit, the graphs, and how in how market failure occurs in some of the ways in the practical market. So if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe the channel.